My friends, this story of the atmospheric river that brought tremendous flooding to parts of British Columbia is really one of nested catastrophes, which is to say, this is not just a problem for the folks on the ground there who have been flooded out, experienced loss of life, whose grocery stores are running out of food, where farmers were working tirelessly through the night to try and evacuate their livestock out of the way of these floods, which is no small feat given that, as you can read here, Fraser Valley farmers supply 50% of British Columbia's eggs, chicken, and dairy. So this is gonna have a lasting impact to British Columbia's food supply. But uh, stepping back with the demolition effectively of the highways and the rail service that connects Vancouver to the rest of Canada, and now the complete closure of the port of Vancouver, one of the few deep water ports in Canada, and indeed the, the biggest one that, that supplies roughly a third of Canadian imports and exports, this is something that is going to have a catastrophic effect across the entire world. That's easy to understand when we look at some of the data today indicating that Canada and of course the United States together are like the number one and two exporters of grains. And so with the rest of the ports on the West Coast already being tremendously congested, as we've been talking about since the middle of 2020, this really feels like we're witnessing with this event uh, the point of impact of the slow motion train wreck that is the supply chain cascading failure. Let's talk about that and look at some data and uh, talk about why it's not going to be a quick fix to get that rail service back running, transporting the grains that have just been harvested from Canada out to the rest of the world, and that spells real problems for everyone. I'm Christian, and this is the Ice Age Farmer broadcast, and I don't mean in any way to diminish uh, the catastrophe that's happening there on the ground. Everything I just said is real. That's actually happening. There's plenty of people reporting on that. So I want to focus instead on this broader impact that uh, that's not being discussed yet, but we need to understand. So here from American Shipper, flooding has cut off the Port of Vancouver rail service. We can expect terminal disruptions, vessel delays, uh, and so forth. Quote, significant portions of the Canadian National Rail and Canadian Pacific Rail lines serving the port Canada's largest port, have been shut down after heavy rain pounded the province in the Pacific Northwest. The consequences likely will be felt throughout the Canadian supply chain, and indeed the world, adding delays for shipments of everything from containers to bulk commodities. Now what does it mean to shut down the port of Vancouver? Let's read from their website to get a sense for uh, what exactly they are doing. The port of Vancouver, Canada's largest port, is about the same size as the next largest five Canadian ports combined. It's the most diversified range of cargo in North America, handling bulk, containers, brake bulk, liquid bulk, automobiles, and crews. The port handles one of every three dollars of Canada's trade in goods outside North America. It's a third of their economy of what's supposed to be getting out. And yes, that's grains, especially at this time of year, but it's not just grains and foods. It's also automobiles that are supposed to be coming in and uh, tractor parts agricultural equipment, livestock feed, chemicals and fertilizers, all of these things that we need to keep our way of life going are no longer coming in. And as far as the grains getting out, it's worth noting that the US and Canada are the number two and three exporters of wheat. So the rest of the world needs to take note that, that a third of Canada's 14% of the world's exported wheat is, has just stopped. This has stopped for now. What is that? 4% of the world's wheat has stopped moving this week. That's a significant, it's a mind numbing figure to just imagine nearly 5% of the wheat of the world just got, just got held up. It's, it's paused for now. And it's not just the rail service. Like I said, mudslides have closed as the, as the uh, Canadian authorities have, have phrased it, all practical routes into and out of uh, that area. All highways from the lower mainland into the British Columbia interior are closed, meaning truck traffic as well, not just the rails, uh, can't get to the port. You can see here how that's the case. And some of these uh, highways are closed in ways that don't look like it's going to be a quick fix. You get a sense for that here. The bridge is quite literally out and that's not going to be a quick repair nor indeed will the rails. This is really going to be a question of how quickly they can restore service and those two rail lines are playing their cards pretty close to their chest right now say, uh, saying we're going to do our best but you know we don't in some cases we don't even yet have physical access to the damaged parts of the rail lines i found this video on tiktok 
where you can see this is not just you know some mud on the rails that needs to be washed off this is entire chunks of land where the rail line used to be supported that are now missing so it's not a quick fix here you need to construct a new bridge or or I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how you engineer a solution out of here. Here from Doomberg, the depth of this crisis will be determined by how quickly Canadian National Railway and Canadian Pacific Railway can repair those damages. The floods have shut down the movement of wheat and canola at a critical post-harvest time. Given pre-existing inflationary pressures on the food industry, the world was counting on these exports. Imports as well have ground to a halt, and cargo ships are stacking up offshore. As I said, that was uh, the port was already feeling the pressure of the congestion further south in North America. So North America is that's like a very effective siege warfare that has been waged against this uh, continent right now. Nothing coming in, none of the supplies we need. The shelves are already empty, and this, as I said, it's 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 just adding more insult to injury. But more than that, I think this is actually, you know, the straw that breaks the camel's back. This, people need to be going out and buying whatever you need to survive for the next few years. Get off grid, get away from the cities. It's not going to get better. Okay, this is not just we need more workers. Biden's going to run the ports 24-7 and get through that backlog. No, this is siege warfare that has been conducted for an extended amount of time on the entire continent right now. And we can cross our fingers and hope that they fix these railways quickly, but it doesn't look good. They're not giving estimates, and, uh, and you know, why would you take these chances? The crisis comes at a time when the port of Vancouver was already handling record amounts of cargo, and now everything that was there is stuck. There's no rails or trucks able to get what's already in the port out of it, and nothing else is coming in. It's just a stunning situation. And I scarcely have words to convey the, 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 the gravity of the situation. Ex officials are already downplaying the seriousness of this crisis as they begin to assess the damage, but uh, it's pretty stunning. Even the rail officials are calling this a, quote, pretty significant event, which is their way of downplaying it. It's basically having our main line shut down. Frankly, about all land access is shut down to the region. The Western Corridor is our life bread of the railroad, so just about all commodities, to some extent, flow through that, especially grain and potash. Of course, it's the food supply. It's always the food supply that's under attack right now. Canadian Pacific is working with customers to find alternate markets or directions to send the grain, but there's not much. The company has also shut down a 30-inch segment of a natural gas pipeline, so it's worth mentioning. We've already been hearing about propane shortages and with the Biden administration talking about shutting down line five, to now see that this natural gas pipeline is shutting down and they're considering shutting down more of, uh, of these natural gas pipelines should it become necessary. This is only going to exacerbate the energy crisis. And it's not just the natural gas. Here from Inquirer.net, floods have also hampered pipelines. Enbridge has shut a segment of the BC natural gas pipeline as a precaution, but also forced the closure of the Trans Mountain Pipeline, which carries up to 300,000 barrels per day of crude from Alberta to the Pacific coast. So we're going to see real problems if these pipelines aren't turned back on as we will if the rail service isn't restored. Look, look, this is a developing story. And the the real question is how quickly these services can be restored. And so we'll be keeping a close eye on that. But I at least wanted to put this video up immediately in real time to try and articulate uh, the scope of this, the global scope of this. A third of the Canadian trade, one of the major exporters of wheat and other grains in the world, was just cut off post-harvest. The timing, it's, it's, it's stunning, the effects of this. And of course, you can already see the rhetoric going up about how this is a climate change-induced supply chain crisis. They're going to blame climate change for this, talk about global warming and how we need to reduce our carbon footprints. It all plays into their script. And whether you think it was weather warfare or whether you think it was uh, atmospheric rivers that are characteristic of the grand solar minimum or both playing in, you know, uh, synergistically, really doesn't matter at this point. The bottom line is that the arteries that fuel the global economy are severed and it's time to get prepared. So stock up on what you need for the next few years because these ships aren't getting in right now. These containers are not moving. And so uh, get what you need, stock up on things that will allow you to produce your own food and defend it in the years ahead. Stand up your communities 
of folks who are looking to, to get through this storm together because these clouds have gathered and it's starting to rain pretty hard at this point. Folks, thanks for watching. You can find this report on iceagefarmer.com. If you value this broadcast, if you appreciate this information, please help me keep the broadcast running. You can do that through Patreon or a few different methods that I've listed at iceagefarmer.com slash support. And I very genuinely appreciate your help in keeping this running and in getting the word out. Thanks for watching, folks. Be well.